G'day guys, this is Bren Carter here, back with Wine for the People, and we have a cracker here. A little bit shorter than the last um, orange wine tasting, but we're gonna be looking at some epic wines, orange wines, bangers from the Barossa. Guys, welcome back. Uh, we've got another little cracking little lineup of, uh, of four banging orange wines out of the Barossa. <laughs> um, and, uh, and of course, well, let's, let's, let, I think it's good to frame this with, I mean, Barossa. Barossa has an incredible, incredible history, doesn't it? Yeah, um, mo particularly for one great varietal, and that's Tras. Oh, Riesling. Riesling, Riesling was the first. Well. Oh, Riesling really? was the first. Yeah, yeah, Riesling was the first. So um, I, I believe I'm, I'm right in saying uh, basically when uh, a whole bunch of Lutheran Germans came out, uh, you know, under persecution in Germany, they gave them, you know, free passage out here to work the lands up in an agricultural district, and they brought with them lovely uh, grape Riesling, planted it typically around like Eden Valley, and this, this is like like the Steingarten Vineyard yeah. plays into this with um, uh, with Pernod Ricard's uh, Jacobs Creek's work up there. Um, and then, of course, you know, basically the Shiraz Alanche yeah. happened uh, and and exploded across across the world, and it was quite a homogenous, um, you know, style of of you know what became quite homogenous over time. But what we'd like to actually showcase here is that Barossa has completely changed and turned over an entirely new leaf, doing something really, really quite fascinating. Yeah, there's a whole um, bunch of new young people, or just people approaching wine differently. Over there. Absolutely. So, especially with um, when it comes to the case of, so what we've purposely done, we're not even going to look at red wine, which is really contentious <laughs> coming from the Bros. We're not even going to look at red wine. We're going to look at not even white wine. Technically, no. it's, it's it's like a variant of white wine. We're going to look at orange wine. Which, disclaimer again, it's not made from oranges. Not made from oranges. Uh, and we should be referring to it as amber or skin contact skin wine. Con but skin fermented white wine. Yeah. Now. Let's have a look at, um, okay, this, this uh, I've got a choice. We're gonna look at two wines from uh, the same producer, uh, and they really break the mold because they're not really, uh, they haven't inherited any vineyards, haven't inherited, don't come from like a, a long history of winemaking or anything like that. And so places like the Barossa can be a little bit clicky, um, uh, and they've kind of come in and they've just done their own thing, and I'm really impressed because they've done really well. But uh, that is uh, these guys, so Yellen and Paps. This is uh, Susan and Michael. Um, and they've come in, they've, they've really started to play around, not just with like, the typical sort of Shiraz, Shiraz and Grenache stuff, but of course we're having a look at uh, another Rhone-based variety, uh, Roussan, usually blended away with, oh, blended away, I should say, blended with Marsan. Um, but this little one here, Wilst, technically, technically not an orange wine. Technically, no, no it's more an intent, it's actually, look at that. <laughs> look at that, look at that. You, you see if you can, see if we can get That's, that on. Yeah. Yeah. If you, any South Australians know that happens a lot with Cooper's Pale. Cooper's Pale. So that that is uh, yeast lees, and that's a hallmark of this particular wine. Um, apparently, apparently you're meant to. Um, yeah. 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 Roll it like a Cooper's. Roll, roll, roll it like a Cooper's. Roll it like a Cooper's. <laughs> so I, I think the uh, exploration of this particular wine uh, here is, uh, and the fascination with with it is. That's cool. Obviously, we get used to quite squeaky clean wines uh, and have been taught squeaky clean uh, in every way, shape and form, uh, microbial or not. Um, and it's, it's really, um, you know, in terms of visuals, we usually get caught up in, in uh, being quite sterile uh, and again, squeaky clean. So uh, on, the, on the, I guess the orange index, I mean, you would easily like, you would call that an orange wine, I guess, yeah. in terms of color. But color wise, that is orange. I don't believe skin contact plays a big role. I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty confident it doesn't. I think the, the more artistic expression of this is the fact that it's so unfiltered. And yeah, so it's just all left oh. untaken off leaves. Have a look at that. So, um, uh, this Ooh. it's creamy this is as, isn't it? Nice. It's but it's just as. got that kind of like ripe pineapple skin kind of thing, mm. just like ripping through it. Mm. Mm. Pineapple skins are really, really um, a sort of accurate way to reflect this. I feel. Um, but the the remarkable thing actually mm. is there feels to be like mm. a fair amount of oak on this. Um, and it plays really well with the amount of lees. The lees are super clean. Now, uh, for those of you who um, uh, who oh. don't know lees, lees is a word for um, uh, what we call uh, basically the yeast. So the reason why this is actually so cloudy is that um, typically when you take remove wine from a barrel, you'll, you'll do a process what's called racking. So you'd actually take uh, let the, the yeast um, form a sediment, and then we'll take that wine, remove that wine off the top. Um, uh, you can rack it several times into more barrels and keep racking it away so we get clearer and clearer, or you can do filtration. Here, this is an intentional, I believe, they literally mix up the barrel and then they put it in the <laughs> bottle. Like, yeah, completely Roll like- Roll it down a hill. 
Yeah, completely like blow that apart. And I think it's really quite quite interesting. Really I think this old. is a, just a really smartly made wine. There's just like the right amount of like use of oak. There's that kind of creamy texture. And then that acid line really comes through and just like balances it out. It's nice and fresh. Mm. I think it's a just a it's a ripping it's a ripping Super wine. Super cool wine. Well, we're gonna have a look at another wine from the same producer. We're gonna to jump to, uh, I'll swap this out. So uh, we've got, so Yellen and Paps, their second take, and I believe the second take range, their, their entire second take range is where they really try to push the boundaries a little yep. bit more. So really sitting in the, in the right range here. They do have a bunch of red wines in that range, which are really yummy, really delicious. Um, but we're gonna be looking at some, uh, obviously the, the, the oranges. oranges, white seas stuff. Skin contact. Yummy wine. Um, so. Oh wow. Yeah, so we have a lot more clarity on this particular one. Now, I do believe skin contact. Skin contact does play a big role in this, this particular one. Um, mm. It's a Vermentino. Mm. Uh, now, Vermentino is really taken off inside Australia in mm. a big way, obviously. It comes from uh, pretty warm places around Italy, typically around um, uh, like um, Sardinia, Puglia, uh, into um, Liguria, not Puglia, sorry, Liguria, um, which is like the coast, the real coast of sort of northern Italy. Um, but there is Vermentino, uh, can also be known as, uh, I found this out from our last one, Pagato. <laughs> Pagato is what uh, the Ligurians call Oh really? Vermentino. And if you go into Piemonte, it's actually called Favorita. So maybe we should do it. I reckon we should do a video on synonyms. What do you reckon? Yeah, wine synonyms. Wine synonyms. There's yeah. a lot. Yeah. There's a lot. Different, there are some, some incredible, incredible synonyms. Um, I, I think um, would be really quite interesting. I, I, didn't, mean, I didn't know that it was Favorita, actually. I was really quite surprised. Yeah, no, I, you, there's always so much to learn. Um, as far as this one goes, mm. there's this like crazy cool herbaceous lift on the nose. Oh, acidity. <laughs> if anyone that watches these know, they, they should acidity. know, uh, acid's my favorite, by far. Tripper. I'm a to total tripper. Uh, for for a, an insane oh mm. man, Asalon, that's just divine. Mm. And really like um, cool oh. um, sort of reduction yeah. on the nose, yeah. just sharpening the aroma up. Reduction is like a, a an element of, of fermentation, so uh, it's a little bit like a gun flint smokiness thing going on, which um, plays really really well into this one because it is so aromatic, it's so lifted that it could be a little bit too almost like heady, almost like incensey. Yeah. Um, so this one sort of brings everything back back in, really quite. Uh, it's really fun execution. This is Man. Yum. Barossa. This is yum. Barossa. <laughs> Barossa's cool. Barossa's rad. <laughs> Man. Yeah, there we go. We gotta spend more time on the Barossa. More time on the Barossa. And there's a whole there's a whole bunch of other producers that we don't have here that are also doing crazy cool fun stuff. Well especially. Should, should we have a crack? Right? Yeah, should we have a crack? Let's alright, so we're gonna go from Yellen and Paps, who are um, obviously very very new to the Barossa because the Barossa's been going for a while. It's like we're talking like 1850s. It's been going for a while. Um, that's why some, we have some of the oldest vines continually growing uh, since sort of, well, in the world, I think, at the moment. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's go to something, someone that's been around since the 1850s, but doing something a little bit different. Um, so talk to us about this, Noah. What's up? Uh, this is Koleski. Uh, they are one of Australia's oldest. Oldest? Old, would, would be up there. Up there. It's like, would they were established? 18, yeah, well, it's early 1850s, I believe. Yeah, so they've been kicking around for a long time. Massive plot of land, what, 500 acres or something yeah, really yeah, massive yeah. like that. Uh, and in the Barossa, the first certified organic and biodynamic uh, producer from 1998, I think. And they have made this uh, little 100%, um, I think it's Viognier. Viognier? Viognier. 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 Viognier's got a really interesting history in Australia as well. Um, so uh, I believe I could, I believe I'm correct in saying it almost died out, and we actually, yeah, yeah, and there was like a ton of interest being brought about. I, I, again, I'm paraphrasing here. I believe it was Yalumba that yeah. um, that really sort of brought a lot of life back into Viognier. And um, they, they probably started a big research because their Viognier is pretty iconic. It's hugely iconic, and they've got different tiers of it. They do some really good job with Viognier, but this is a, a completely different this, take. Look at this, that. This is um, this is the, is this the orangest orange wine we've yeah, had this in is probably, orange bangers this is of orange wine. Orange. This is this, this is what you classify yeah, as an amber wine. Yeah. This is the middle of the traffic light. This is the middle of the traffic light. This is the the wait. Don't go. Don't stop. But wait. Or wait. Sip, we or, have wine. Or I got that. Oh, dude, smell this. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yep, I remember this. I think I think one of the greatest appeals for me for orange wine is the fact that um, it is really um, really aromatic. I mean, the, these mm. you do you don't need to be like a sommelier or a winemaker or anything like that to really appreciate these. These jump out. You can, of the glass you can smell you. them across the room. That's that's incredible. It's almost like um, it's almost like a musket. 
Yeah, variety. it's quite musky on the nose as well. Far out. Mm. That's tidy. So I believe, I believe this is no SO2 as well. I believe no niente, nothing. Uh, no sulfur. I believe. Mm. I've, I've had a, um, does it say? Zero added sulfites. Zero no added sulfites. There you go. And what vintage is that? 2018. That's awesome. Guys, that, that's like looking really, really tidy for, that's you right. know, it's had at least a year in bottle, or and, and then some year and a half in bottle, no sulfur whatsoever, and that um, is is squeaky clean. That's it's amazing. Delicious. Yeah. It's yum. It's very yum. That's really cool. Um, fun, fun fact about this wine. Um, that was a bit of a festival uh, in the city in Adelaide last year called um that uh, the guys at the fruitful pursuit ran called um, oh, was, um not quite white which was not a orange quite white orange wine festival which we participated in and uh brought esoterico and our skin contact fiano uh, dreamers yep. creed uh this was peer voted the best yeah i can understand why yeah. um why uh they beat us uh <laughs> Didn't but crack. don't it do, doesn't bother me at this little level this is uh <laughs> this is this is this pretty is delish smoking. yeah i totally totally get that All right, so killer, old school, traditional, doing something completely new in the Barossa. Yeah, in the Barossa. Like, what's going on? Um, all right, well let's let's Sorry, have a look at, at someone else. Do we have a? We got a corkscrew. We, can read we do have a corkscrew. Yeah, man, Barossa's right, going back I'll, to old I'll school. This one. this one's pretty dope. Now, this I, I read this on the website. Um, this is uh, Whistler's Back to Basics, which is yeah. a blend of white Frontenac, Riesling, Semillon, and Pinot Blanc. Um, literally says on the website because as you can probably see there's a lot of sediment at the bottom it says to literally roll it like a Cooper's literally literally roll it like a Cooper's roll it like a Cooper's for, it, if you can see the color now after it's kind of for those of you up. who aren't from Adelaide and don't know this strange because I'm not originally from Adelaide I was quite when I ordered a beer at a pub once and they put it down on its side and rolled it like this it's it, it's one of those just Adelaide South Australian quirky yep. things I think Cooper's is a beer brand, very, very popular beer brand. It's the most iconic, I would say, beer brand of South Australia next very. to West End. The best end. Your the best, best end of the day. It's the West End of the day. Um, sorry, Cooper's. Yeah, so um, they don't filter their beers, just like this one is definitely uh, unfiltered. And as you can look at it now, it's looking it's, like a... It looks like a Nipah. Yeah, exactly. It looks like a New England say, IPA. Nipa. And I, I don't mind that. Uh, I no, don't, I'm, okay, I don't, I'm, I'm okay. sure there's going to be some Barossa pun and some old school people that's like, it's not the time for this. You know, swells, I think it's the time for this. Swells range. Yes, <laughs> swells old school. Swells old school. That is, that's a uh, faux pas right there. Pour yourself first before you pour your guest. Yeah, thanks, man. It's all good. It's all good. Um, but yeah, so this is That's so cool. It looks like this lo looks like unfiltered pear juice. <laughs> it's so good. Um, but all of this is left on skins. But I think the frontenac itself, particularly, is fermented oh, on whole that's bunches. Freaking fun as well. Yeah, I, I had this the other week. It is. I'm not sure there's going to yeah. be any wine that I smell yeah. on this this program that that I'm not going to be like, oh my god, this is fun. You know, this yeah, is, this is amazing. As far as orange wine goes, yeah, unless we pick up something crazy, but this is. Yeah, right. This is fun. Again, what's really interesting from uh, those of you that watched the last uh, six Orange Bangers, yeah. um, uh, the really cool thing about this, and, and it's a bit of a consistent thread, is that they're all outrageously drinkable. Like, this is mm. not a, um, these aren't intellectually challenging wines. And I think this is where uh, this style of wine really starts to come into its own. Not, not dissimilar mm. to rosé. It's really hard to find, you know, rosé that's outrageously expensive. And mm. I, I think that's where this, wine style can can quite easily sort of coexist with more traditional white wines, traditional red wines, um, and particularly in the Barossa. Like, Barossa's been making for 150 years skin contact wines. Mm -hmm. They're called red wines. <laughs> They're just doing it with white grapes now. Boom. You know, it's actually a pretty, it's, it's actually a pretty simple thing when you yeah. put it that way. Um, I, I, I love this wine. This, this wine is like summer. This is like being on the beach with a pine lime splice. And it actually tastes like a Nipah. Yeah, it tastes, it tastes like a it's basically sick. So, the the gentleman behind this, Josh mm -hmm. Pfeiffer. Now, Josh, if you're watching this, I think you should make this bubbly. <laughs> yes. Because cause yes. then it would taste like a New England IPA. Yeah, like, no, a hundred percent. And we could convert all those craft beer drinkers into wondrous Barossa wine drinkers. Who would have thunk it? Yeah, that's it. This this is the entry level. This is so cool. Yeah, I would I wouldn't mind this. Slightly sparkling. Soda stream? What do you guys think? We taste off wines in their still formats and then in a soda stream. Yeah, I'm okay. I'd like to put your comments below 
and ask whether see if we, if you want to, we will make it happen. Yeah, we'll do it. We will put the most outrageous wines through a soda stream and we will taste them for you. So you don't have to. <laughs> All right. Bit of a line. Don't ruin your soda stream, but we'll ruin ours. We'll ruin ours. <laughs> don't put milk in a soda stream is, is what I found out one day. It's, it's, it do, doesn't work. Um, guys, thanks so much for joining us for, for uh, hopefully a little, little bit less time than yeah, our last one. Yeah, I think that one. was a lot more efficient. I tended to blab on a little bit. But guys, thank you so much for following us. Um, and guys, if there's anything to go by, the Barossa is starting to turn a, a completely new leaf. We have here three producers, four wines, all white wines, orange wines, skin contact. Amber. Or amber or... <laughs> or at least on Lee's in one instance. Um, <laughs> surly, which is a legitimate style. It's just a lot of Surly. We'll talk about this. French winemaking terms that everyone should know about. Battle Nars. Mm, watch this space. Anyway, guys, thanks again. Cheers.